Hello everyone and welcome back to Miss Key's Classroom. My name is Rachel and in today's video I am going to be sharing all the websites that I use as a teacher. I had a request for this video a little while ago and have finally got around to filming it. Um, there's going to be something in this for everyone because the websites that I talk about can be used in a primary school setting but also would be suitable in high school as well. So hopefully there's something in this video for everyone. But yeah, let's get straight into it and I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so the first website that I'd like to share with you all is called No Red Ink and I use this one in my English classes, especially with my Year 8 students, to help improve their spelling, grammar and their writing skills. So you can sign up for a free account on this website and then you can add all your students to the class that you create as well. Um, I can't show you what my class looks like because it would come up with all my students' names. But what you can do is you can then assign your students various um, diagnostic and practice activities um, all about spelling, grammar and writing. So maybe there's something specific you want to focus on. Um, maybe you've noticed that your students are struggling with capital letters or something like that. So you can browse through all the categories on um, No Red Ink and you can choose the one about capitalization and you can assign that to your students. The students then complete the activities and you then get all this data at the end, all these graphs that show you where students have um, got questions right and maybe the parts that they're missing out on. It also shows you when a student has mastered a certain topic, which means that they've done enough questions or they've got enough questions right to have shown that they really understand what that topic is about. And so that's a really positive thing to be able to see in a student because it shows their progress in a certain area of spelling, grammar or writing. Um, and so it'll show you for the whole class, all your class data, and then it helps you identify maybe where there's a few gaps in a student's learning or maybe in the classes learning as a whole. And so then you can teach to those things a little bit more. Um, so like I said, maybe it's capital letters and so you'd assign something about capital letters and then hopefully see the students apply that to their own writing. So there are also writing activities on No Red Ink where you can assign a prompt to students. Sometimes it's a photo prompt or a question that they are asked and they just need to write a short paragraph about that. You can even um, you can even choose how long you want them to write. So maybe it's 75 words, maybe it's 200 words. So you can set that as well. Um, and then No Red Ink will actually go through and mark that for you and it will identify areas um, that the students maybe struggled with something. So maybe it's subject, verb, agree or maybe it's word choice or something like that. And so then you can go through and you can say, okay, this student has maybe found this area a bit challenging in their writing. I've seen that in their narrative writing as well. And so you can go through that either as a whole class or with individual students. And so I find No Red Ink an excellent, excellent website to use um, in my English classes. I think it would work for primary school as well if you do have access um, to laptops or iPads or something like that because you can definitely choose the grade level that you are working at. You could even choose to do these activities as a whole class. Um, so creating a class and then having all the students do them together with you on the board. Um, so rather than you having to think up all these different activities to do to improve um, spelling and grammar, no Red Ink's already got them for you and so you could use it as a whole class um, sort of activity as well. So there's heaps of different ways that you can use No Red Ink, but yeah, that's my first recommendation. Let me know in the comments if you've heard of No Red Ink before or tried it because I think it's an excellent website and an excellent tool, um, especially when teaching English or when teaching writing and spelling. So the next website I would like to share with you is called Padlet. And I like to think of Padlet as a way to have class discussions and allow students to share their ideas without it being um, sort of as high stakes as just answering questions, asking questions to the class and then having students raise their hand and answer. It sort of allows students time to think about their ideas before sharing them with the class. And so Padlet sort of is like it would be like if you had sticky notes and you asked each student to write on them and stick them up on the board. So it's sort of like an electronic version of a sticky note mind map, I guess, which is another thing that I also use in my classes. But this is like a digital version of that. 
The really good thing about this is that it saves all the um, thinking and all the ideas and everything that the students come up with. It saves it so that you can refer back to it. And so what you can do is you can go onto Padlet and you can create a free account and then you can create a board. So maybe you are having a class discussion um, I don't know, about something in your class. So for me, maybe we are brainstorming film techniques. And so I would go in and I would create my little film techniques board. And then what you can do is the students can then go onto Padlet, onto the website, and they can join the pad that you are working on. So the board or the wall, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so maybe you are asking them to brainstorm all their film techniques that they see in a particular scene or something in the film that you're watching. So what the students can do is they can write their little sticky note and then they can click post and then it will go up on the pad for everyone to be able to see. So I like to have the whole pad up on the screen so that as soon as someone posts something, it'll pop up on the screen. Um, like I said earlier, the thing I really like about this is that it allows all students to get involved in a class discussion. Class discussions can be really daunting sometimes for students, especially if they're worried about getting the answer wrong or they're maybe not super confident talking in front of everyone. It allows everyone to share their ideas because often the students who are super quiet and don't answer the questions, they've actually got amazing ideas that they want to share as well. And so this sort of just removes that you know, really scary element of speaking in front of the class and it gives students time to refine their ideas um, before posting something. And so once all the students have posted all their Padlet ideas, they've stuck up their little posts and everything, um, it's really good because Padlet saves the whole pad for you and you can refer back to it. You can change the settings so that people can respond to different posts, so maybe say, hey, that's an awesome idea or something like that. Um, and then yeah, you can revisit the pad at any time. So if you haven't used Padlet before, I strongly recommend you give it a go for doing class discussions. I'm sure there's heaps of different ways that you can use it, but that's what I use it for. Um, again, if you use Padlet, let me know in the comments below how you like to use it in your class. So the next two websites that I'm going to talk about are websites that I use to create my resources. I get a lot of questions about how I create my resources and so these websites are two that I use all the time. The first one is called Slides Go, um, which I know a lot of you have probably heard of before, um, but this is a website which gives you lots of different Google Slides and lots of different PowerPoint templates. They are absolutely gorgeous and they have every single template under the sun that you could possibly be looking for. So maybe you are creating a science PowerPoint. You can go on here and you can search for science and then hundreds of different templates will come up and you can download them. A lot of them are free, some of them are paid, but I just tend to go for the free ones. Um, and so yeah, you download it and you can choose if you want to use it as a Google Slides or as a PowerPoint template. And so yeah, once you've downloaded it, it will pop into your PowerPoint or your Google Slides um, as a massive long document with all these different slides on it. And you can sort of pick and choose the ones that you want and then just delete the ones that you don't want. Um, what I really like about Slides Go is that the different Different templates always have little icons um, in them and so they are great to use when you're making a PowerPoint. They help um, students to visualize things and they have so many different icons for everything. Maybe you're talking about um, directions in geography or something and so you can put a little compass and stuff like that. So I really like Slides Go. Um, I know a lot of teachers use that but definitely when I'm creating my PowerPoints I always use Slides Go um, to get some inspiration uh, and make my PowerPoints look a little bit prettier. So the next website that sort of ties in with Slides Go that I often use to make resources is Canva. Canva is an incredible website and if you haven't given it a go yet, I strongly recommend. It has templates for everything you could possibly imagine. Um, I use it even to make my YouTube thumbnails and so Canva is just an excellent resource to use. My students also love using it. Um, if we're ever creating posters or something like that, the students love going on there because they can pick out a template to use. Um, so for example, we were making medieval posters a few weeks ago in Haas and so the students went on there and they could pick a template that they liked, they could change the colours and all those sorts of things. And so yeah, actually both Slides Go and Canva my students like using us. I sort of introduced both of them to the students and now they just love them for everything. The only thing is that if you do choose to use them with your students, just be 
aware that they will take a massive amount of time to pick a template and pick colors and all that sort of stuff. So maybe if you do want to use um, either SlidesGo or Canva with your students, give them a time limit for how long they have to pick their template and pick their colors and that sort of thing before they actually have to start doing the work. But yeah, if you haven't checked out Canva, um, I 100% recommend it. It is an excellent resource um, for creating resources in your class. So yeah, check it out. It's an excellent one to use. So the next website is one that I only recently discovered, but it's called Kids News. And as the name suggests, this website includes lots and lots of news articles which are suitable for children. Um, one thing that's really great about Kids News is that you can filter based on topic. So maybe you're looking at the environment um, or maybe current affairs, and so you can filter based on topic, but you can also filter the articles based on reading level. And so there's green, yellow, and red reading level. And so Green is sort of um, maybe easier to digest, good for younger year levels. Yellow might be um, suitable for sort of upper primary. Maybe there's a few more challenging words in there. And then red reading level would be suitable for high school students as there's quite a few challenging words in there, or maybe the content is a little bit more mature. So the way I use Kids News in my class is that on Wednesdays, my year eights always do reading at the beginning of the lesson. I try and mix it up with the sort of text that we read, um, but sometimes we will read news articles and I always go to Kids News to get these. Um, and so I'll pick an article for us to read, we'll read it out as a class, and then right at the bottom of every article are some discussion questions. And so I can either get the students to do these in pairs or individually, or maybe sometimes we do these questions as a class as well. But then also at the bottom of each article, if there are any challenging words, maybe words that students might not have heard before, there is a glossary of terms um, with the words definitions. And so yeah, I really like Kids News. I think that it is an awesome uh, resource to use maybe if you're studying news with your students or looking at articles or even as just a way to sort of mix up your reading material that you're looking at so if you haven't checked out kids news before definitely have a look at it and see if it would work in your class so last but not least this one is a bit of a fun one bit of a silly one but it is the name spinner website and so essentially what you can do is you can put all of your students' names into this website and it will create a little wheel with all their names on it and you can click spin and it will select a student for you. And it does a little like woo when it, um, when it selects a student. And so the, the way that I use this in my class is maybe if I'm trying to decide who's going to get house points or something like that, I'll put everyone's name into the name spinner and we spin around. I also do it for choosing groups, so randomly allocating students to group. Um, to groups because they can't argue when the name spinner picks their groups for them And so I like to do it that way the students love it as well because they're always like oh my god whose name's gonna be next um, but then you can also do it in different ways um, if you are trying to, maybe students are in a group and you are trying to assign them a topic to look at. I've done that before as well. So I did that with film techniques. I wanted to assign a film technique, technique sorry, to each group. And so we put them in the spinner and then each group um, selected their technique from that as well. So. This spinning wheel, it's a bit of a fun one, but yeah, there's lots of different ways that you can use it in your class, but I wanted to share it with you. It's sort of a new way of picking names out of a hat, I guess, but students love it because they can see it up on the screen and they're like watching as it spins around and they get excited when it lands on their names. So that's a bit of a fun one for you. Um, check it out if you haven't already. There's lots of different versions of it, but I'll link the one that I use below um, for you to check out. So there you have it. They are just some of the websites that I like to use as a teacher. Please let me know in the comments below what your favorite teaching websites are. I would love some new ones to look at. Hopefully you might not have heard of some of the ones that I mentioned today and you'll be able to discover a new resource or a new website to use in your class. But for now, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you all very soon in my next video. Bye.